record. And welcome. This is a session on how to cross list your courses in Canvas. And my name is Pam Johnson. I'm the Digital Learning Facilitator for Reynolds. And I am Lorraine Cassian. I'm the Digital Learning Facilitator for uh, the Owen District. And we're really glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. So the first thing I'm going to do is share our screen. And um, we will include a link to this bit.ly in the YouTube description. So if you want to look down there, but I want to go through the steps that are in this slide uh, on how to cross list. After we go through just a couple of the slides and show you the steps, then Lorraine is going to demonstrate that live for you inside of Canvas. So the first thing, let me go ahead and get onto uh, a present so it's a little bit bigger for you. The reason you might consider cross listing is if you have multiple classes that you're teaching the exact same content. So the example I have here is a music teacher who's doing the exact same thing across different classes. So what cross listing will allow you to do is to pull in those sections from other classes under one main course. So then all you have to do is post content in that one main course and all of those sections will get that content and those sections are still tied to PowerSchool for grading purposes. We do have some steps that we think are uh, critical in the way that you do this so that if you are using that crossback from grading for PowerTeacher Pro, we first ask that you go to Canvas and cross list your courses. And then once those courses are cross listed, then you will actually go to the assignment groups and sync that course and of course those sections that are with it to PowerTeacher Pro. So again, this is for those people who are using Canvas also as a grading feature and using the pass back to PowerTeacher Pro. This we found is the best kind of um, steps, I guess, the order of steps to take. Okay, and then the other thing, just before you cross list, we always wanna tell people, this is one of the reasons we wanted to do it at the beginning of this semester. Um, you have right now, let's say you're gonna cross list a course with another course. The one that's the sub course that's going to be pulled under the main course will lose all of, like it doesn't become a course anymore. Really what you do, you've taken the section, the students out, and you've put that section in that main course. So if there were things like assignments, then you're going to lose those assignments whoops, that were associated in that previous course. A lot of people are like, well, can you restate that? Can you tell me what that means? And that means that right now, if you've got courses going and you've got students who've had submitted work, when you cross list them, that work that they submitted will no longer be there because they're going to be pulled into a new course. So what you would like to do is make sure you've got everything graded, that you're okay, you know, we're okay. We know that we're not going to see previous work that was submitted before today, but moving forward, we'll get to see everything. And I might pause. Do you have a question there? Or Lorraine, do you want to state that a little bit better? Did, did you understand what she was saying? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So sometimes I just got a notice from my high school that the honors students are going to be pulled out on Thursday for a CTE course. And then in power school, she's going to have two courses. Well, if she starts putting grades, if she publishes the Canvas course for the honors and starts doing assignments and grades, and then she decides to cross list, like Pam was saying, whoever becomes this uh, child course or the course that's underneath the parent, all of the grades and assignments are gone. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to cross list, make sure you save the the record of the scores um, if you've already published your course. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And that's really the only thing that we really just, we hesitate, we make sure that people understand. And in the process of, again, you just identify a main course. So I'm gonna, you know, you say, hey, this one's gonna be my parent course. And I'll always see that one appear in my list of courses. The sub courses that I cross list will, disappear after they're cross-listed. So again, the parent one's the one you're always going to see. So I'll identify that parent course. 
I'll go to the top URL. And again, you're going to watch Lorraine do this in just a minute. I'll grab the, the last digits of the URL. That's the course identification code. And I just copy it, right click copy. Then I'll go to the sub course. And when I go to that sub course, here are the steps. And again, it's much easier when you see them happening, but these will be printed for you so that you can follow them if you're going to do this on your own. You'll go to that course, you'll click on settings. There's a tab at the top called sections. You will actually have to click on the sections before you get this list to the right. And again, we're going to go through that list visually in one second. Yes. Can you please go back one step? Yes. Where you copy the number? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yes. You, you copy just the number, right? Yes. Just that number. Okay. Not the forward slash. You're yes. right. Yes. And I just saw that. I need to take that off because it's not the forward <laughs> slash, just that that's, number. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Just that the highlight. Yep. And then the next thing is going to that sub course. So again, it looks like these are just the steps listed for you. It'll be much easier. I think I'm a visual person when I follow what somebody else is doing, but I have to have these listed to the side and I just kind of follow these steps. So these are what we're gonna follow um, and let Lorraine show us, I think in just a second. Yeah. So once you hit that cross list, you're gonna get a pop-up and it says, put the title but that's the reason we copy that number. You can just put that ID number here. So right click, paste it. And then whenever you click over, I always have people click over to the white area and then that course will appear right below. And you just make sure, yep, that's my parent course. That's where I want to cross list it. So I think right now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna let Lorraine share and then we're gonna go through these steps again. Okay. So here we are, my email, of course. <laughs> I have to move the, sorry, Pam. That's fine. There we go. So here's the course that I want to grab the number for. This is going to be the parent. So I go up here and just highlight the number, mm -hmm. right click and copy. And that's my parent course. I need to go to the course that I wanna fold underneath. So I'm gonna go back to my courses and I'm gonna choose one that starts with a U. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the course that I want to have as the child. And this so I scroll all the way down on the left course navigation menu to settings. Once I have settings, you're going to see course details when you first log into settings. We need to select sections and you don't see the link that you need here. You have to click the section that is there already that is actually your course Watch the right-hand sidebar menu, Alfredo. Now I have the ability to cross-list this section. Do you see that? Uh-huh. So when I click that, here's this screen that Pam was showing just a minute ago. I right-click and paste that number. Click over in the white, and there it is the sketchnoting course that I want to cross list. Once I do that, if I had students in this course, you would see all of the students and um, other people, but these are both courses that I'm building, so I don't have anybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's done now, so... Um, Pam's going to show you a few ways that once you have the course cross-listed, you'll be able to do some things with your students and your grades so that you can see the group separated. I can show you, though, if I go back to my courses on the left and I scroll down, that course that was the United Nations Sustainability Goals no longer shows up there because it's inside of the sketchnote course. Just want to make sure you saw that. Yes, it is inside of what? 
It's inside of the course that I had. Um, the parent course. Under. Okay. Okay. So I can show you that now if I go to settings and sections, see, now I have two sections. Yeah. And Lorraine, one thing, can you click on uh, right there, click on the sustainability section? So to the right, Lorraine gets something that says decross list, and that's only an admin function. So if you have friends or if you accidentally cross list the wrong course, you'll just need to reach out to your digital learning facilitator. And so when we look at that section, we have the ability to decross list it, but a teacher doesn't have that right. So again, okay. if you accidentally cross list and we have people do that quite a bit, it's fine. Just reach out to us <laughs> we can fix it and we you. can fix it. So I'm going to stop sharing. All right. Well, and do you have any like questions? By clicking that, you undo what you just did, right? I did only to show you. You're okay. not going to be able to do that, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I have one question. So when you when you cross uh, when you cross list one course one course, uh, you import all the data all the data except grades and um, um, assignments. Assignments, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you import the list of students and everything. And they're still attached to their separate Power Teacher Pro course. Okay. So the one thing that I want to do, and I'm going to escape and just go into a, let me pull my settings up just a little bit. I want to show you, this is a live teacher um, that I know she had her courses cross-listed. So you can see we're in her ELA class, and these are the two sections. So if I go over to grades on the left, I can still look at the individual section grades. Now, she has a, she's been looking at it, so it's defaulted. You see this little uh, block that's going to let me drop down and choose the different classes. But if you didn't see that, you could click under view and filters and sections. So I'm going to take that off. So see that's gone because that's the default. So what you would want to do as soon as you cross list and you go to grades, click view, filters, and sections. And we have these notes in the slides for you. So now I can come over and I can look at grades for all the sections or I can just look at one class at a time, which is very helpful if you just want to in Canvas only look at one of your courses. So that's one way you can still kind of differentiate and just look at a course, I mean, excuse me, one group of kids. Okay, I wanna show you one more. Do you have a question? That I heard of. No. Okay, so let's say I'm in, uh, I'm gonna make an assignment. So I'm gonna to go to um, modules. I think she has her assignments hidden or at the bottom. Let me see where they are. Yeah, so I'm gonna click on assignments here instead of going into her modules since because this is a live class. So I just wanna show you what it looks like. If I'm creating an assignment, right now it's going to default to everyone. So when I create that assignment, it's going to make the assignment for both of those sections. But let's say I've got this group is moving ahead, they're going to do some extra work, or I only want this assignment to be for one group and not the other group of students, not the other course. So when I hit that plus assignment to create a new assignment, at the very bottom where it says everyone, if you click to the right of that, sorry, my screen's jumping, let me get back there. If you click to the right, you'll see you've got the different sections here. So I could just assign it to period one and take off the everyone. So this assignment is only gonna be visible to the first period, even though as a teacher, I'm gonna see all the content, but because I've just assigned it to that one class, that class will only see what I give them. So again, you're going to see everything. So if you did two separate assignments, you're going to see both. But if it's only assigned to 81, 81 is just going to see that. And if I did another assignment that was assigned to 89, they would only see that assignment, just like if you did individual students. All right. And I think those are the two major places that we want to show you that you can still differentiate this course. 
Um, it's got the same content, but if I wanted to give assignments to one co uh, class, I can and not the other. And I can go look at the grades for just one class and not all of them. Anything else you want to point out, Lorraine, while I'm in this kind of live class? Um, it, it's interesting because some of this is they have changed things a little bit in the grading. So um, we're seeing the most up to date grading, but I don't know if you cross list now. It's really important to cross list before you import your categories. And you'll know they're imported from PowerSchool because you see that um, it's a piece of paper with an arrow. That's the icon you get when you have a PowerTeacher Pro category. And then you can also show him that black toggles that she doesn't have them syncing yet. There's some green and black ones on the right, Pam. Right here. So this black one will not sync and this green one will. And I just got a report today that yeah. I think we got an email saying that these were not working correctly. So mm -hmm. if you wanna turn them off right now and just keep working until it is working, then you can go back in. And this is the easiest place. You can do it inside the assignment, but if you click on assignments, you can just scroll through the whole list and I can just quickly click, click and turn those off. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and that's a great point. Um, our very first thing that we talked to you about in those steps, those se sequential steps are, we ask that you cross list first and then come here and use these three dots and we want to import assignment groups. So if for any reason you have, which we did with this teacher, this teacher um, had cross listed, she was a prime example, and one class it was syncing grades and the other it wasn't. And it's because after we cross listed, we needed to come back in and click this again to reconnect them. So again, that's important to do that after you cross listed. All right, I think that's it. You've got those slides. Those slides will walk you through everything that we've done today. And Lorraine, I think has shared with you the presentation slides and the My Learning. Uh, link. So if you click on the My Learning Plan link, you can get your CEU credit. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So thank you for being with us today. I'm going to stop our recording.